Hi, it's a lipstick gal. Thank you so much for watching today. Let's talk about some new makeup releases. I spent the whole month of January, I don't know why. After having made so many purchases during the last quarter, October, November, December of 2022, I basically told myself um, I need to take a break. Part of it is I got in the habit of purchasing a lot and I don't want to over purchase. My goal is to try things, first of all, that are interesting to me, things that definitely have a place in my collection, um, things that you would find interesting so I can try them and we can talk about it. And then on top of that, uh, making sure that I'm not just buying what's buzzy and everybody is, you know, would it really work for my 48 year old skin? Would it really work for the way I wear makeup? And I feel like even though there are a lot of cool trendy things out there, understanding myself really has helped in the last 12 months to purchase the right sorts of things and I have less fails and more hits. My goal was to take a month off not look on Instagram, not like shop online, not go in stores, and just give myself a moment to enjoy what I had. So I'm ready to go and see what there is, to see what's out there. My goal is not to talk about everything on the Trend Mood One Instagram account. We'd be here forever, and you already know I'm a chatty Cathy. But beyond that, I really wanna talk about the things that give me that initial like, wait, what? Or the, ooh, those sorts of responses, those emotional like, excuse me, <laughs> or the ones that draw me in and make my heart go pitter pat. All right, the first thing here that kind of pulled me in, and it's not so much the product as the description of the product. There is a new foundation from KVD. This is the Good Apple Serum Foundation. And once you start reading past the first little blurb, that's when I was like, wait, what? All right, so it is supposed to be a full coverage, transfer proof, natural finish, extreme wear, lightweight serum foundation. Like, and in my mind, remember, I've been wearing makeup since I was 14. That's 30 some odd years. It's been a long time. But I remember when makeup was very different, when shades were very different, when we weren't nearly as inclusive. So the good thing is there's 40 shades in this range. That's a good place to start. I do think that there might be like potentially some holes. It does look overall from the picture I'm seeing here, it does seem to me to lean just a little bit on the yellowy side. Maybe it's all a little bit warm, but I found that to be the case with their um, Good Apple Balm Foundation as well as, their, as well as their concealers. They all tend to look a little bit yellow, but I feel like there are some brands where everything's a little bit warmer than everything else. Okay, but beyond that, the minute I start thinking full coverage, transfer proof, covering blemishes, acne scars, and all of that, I don't think lightweight. Maybe I'm buying the wrong foundations, but the minute I start hearing, you know, that it's full coverage and transfer proof and all of that, it instantly takes me back to heavy duty cake-like appearance. Like a really big, massive, whoa, that's a lot of makeup sort of look. And then you add words in like serum, lightweight, natural finish. My brain is so confused. <laughs> and I know technology and makeup is always changing, but this sounds like two completely opposite things. It doesn't really sound like something that makes sense in here. It sounds like, like all the word salad of foundation and we cram it all into one description. So I'm, I'm curious, not curious enough to go out and buy it because I've picked up a few new coverage products recently. Um, and maybe this one's better, I don't know. But I wanna see reviews. I wanna see what the wear time is like. I wanna see what's going on with this foundation. Um, and I definitely would not purchase this unless I could go into my local Ulta and you know swatch it and find my absolute perfect color. And if there isn't a perfect color, I am not, I'm tired of buying foundations that don't match anymore, that aren't even close. So I that is a no for me. But I don't know for sure, it looks interesting. It's supposed to be um, transfer proof, stands up to sweat and humidity, pore blurring, elastomer pigments, seamless blend. Like there's a lot of stuff in here. It's $42, 40 shades. This almost sounds too good to be true. I'm really curious. I'm not gonna run out and buy it. If you have purchased it, if you have tried it, first of all, what are your thoughts? Second of all, is this the sort of product that you're looking for? At 48, I don't want anything that's heavy. 
I like the idea of a natural finish, but what does that even mean? When I see natural ingredients on like a food label, that means nothing. I don't know. I'm wondering if natural finish is the new we're saying something without saying something or we're letting you interpret what that means to you. I don't know. I'm really intrigued, but not enough to make a purchase. Let me know what your thoughts are on this new foundation. I am very, very curious about this. You know, I love a lip product and it looks like LYS Beauty has new lip liners and new matte lipsticks. They have their Speak Love Moisture Matte Lipstick. Okay, right there. That's all of the things I love. Moisture, matte, Ah, it is $20. It's a satin matte lipstick with high impact color payoff. That's very exciting. It's supposed to have hydration for all day wear. There are eight, oh, actually seven shades. It's supposed to reduce the appearance of fine line and wrinkles because it has chia seed oil. Like you're saying all the right things. Their lip pencil is $15. It's a matte pencil that defines it's supposed to effortlessly glide and be long lasting and not transfer or bleed. All right, what's interesting here is that the lip liner shades are significantly darker than the, I feel like there's a lot more color in play in the lipsticks. And that's interesting because a lot of times I'll see like a red lipstick and a red liner and a pink lipstick and a pink liner and a nude lipstick and a nude liner. And we're not getting that here because there is a red shade and there is no red liner. I like that the liners are deeper, darker, more intense colors. I love doing that. I have a darker, more brown leaning liner on with a lighter nude, almost pink leaning nude lipstick. I am forever mixing and matching. I very rarely, even with a bright punchy pink or a bright red, I'll wear a darker, not like matching liner. And I think it's really smart to do this, but I wonder whether people are gonna be a little confused. I don't know, um, but What's interesting also is I think I remember the prices being just a little bit less expensive for LYS. I feel like um, a lot of their products are in the teens or low 20s. And maybe I just assumed a lipstick would be kind of like mid-teens, you know, like maybe $15, $17. And a lip liner would be like $14. $13. So these prices, are, maybe it's just because everything is more expensive these days. I don't know. These prices seem just a little bit higher than what I had been expecting from the brand, but you know me and a lip product. I don't need another red lipstick, but the red lipstick called Rich AF is calling my name. Like, buy me, buy me, buy me. I don't know. I might pick one of these up. Probably not immediately, but I would be curious. Um, I don't know that I'm going to get into a Sephora anytime soon. My closest Sephora I don't even think they carry LYS in stores. So this would be something I would have to like blind purchase without swatching. But there's a couple of shades that do interest me. Let me know, are you wearing lipsticks? Are you wearing lip liners? Is this brand interesting to you? Um, I'm really pulled in by the moisture matte lipstick part of it. And the fact that it's supposed to not go anywhere and be good for what sounds like fine lines and wrinkles. That's me. I told you I'm a sucker for a lip product. Lawless has a forget the filler, plumping, line smoothing, tinted lip balm. And I was just like, tinted lip balm, fine. I've got a hundred of those. But the minute I heard line smoothing, again, okay, so I have two different types of lip products that I lean heavily on. One, like a straight up bullet lipstick, love me a bullet lipstick. And then I like lighter weight, more comfortable, balmy sorts of products for my work days. I work as a dental assistant. I'm in a mask half of the week and I want something on my lips so that they don't get dry and craggly and disgusting. But I also don't want something that is so like heavily pigmented that as I'm talking and my lips are rubbing up against my mask, I take my mask off at lunchtime or at the end of the day and I have clown mouth. I don't want that. So this sounds kind of really great, but I have to remind myself, I'm looking over here because they're all over here. How many tinted balms do I have? A ton. I probably am not going to pick this up unless I hear amazing reviews about it, but it's supposed to have visibly plumping ingredients. Um, it's supposed to have a beautiful tint of color. It's supposed to be smooth and comfortable. Yeah, but they're $26. It's a little bit more than I'm willing to pay for a tinted lip balm. I tend to like things like the Honest Lip Balms or things that are just a little bit less expensive, but they're really pretty. They did really catch my attention, but they're, I don't, I don't think I'm gonna pick this up 
unless it's like one of those things that people just can't stop raving about. I've got some pretty good stuff right now. This next product wasn't even on my radar until I saw a review where someone raved about it. It's not brand new, brand new, but it's new in the last several weeks. It's the new Juvia's Place Radiant Complexion Foundation. It's our natural radiance foundation. It's $23. Easy Glide Foundation, Flawlessly Radiant, Luminous Complexion, Lightweight, Long Wear, Water Resistant. Okay, but I like that it's not talking about like heavy duty coverage. Um, and I know everybody's coverage preferences are different. I tend to prefer things that are maybe medium. Um, medium full is kind of like as much coverage as I like. I usually will thin out a full coverage foundation, but this sounds like exactly my type of foundation preference. Um, it looks like it's, oh, again, another natural finish. What does that mean? I would love it if somebody would explain to me what natural finish means. I'm seeing it a lot on complexion products. And I, I definitely, again, is that me interpreting it the way I want or what exactly does natural finish mean? It looks like they also have a new pressed powder. Their powder foundation is $18. Um, it also has a radiant luminous um, wear and finish to it. It's also water resistant. This is something that since it's not the KVD price, it's almost, not quite half, but almost half the price. I'm not planning on running out and grabbing it right now, but I have seen a positive review about it. It does look like the sort of finish that I would like, but um, I think I have too many foundations. This is probably a pass, but this is one that might actually live in my memory and like pop up every time I'm thinking complexion. What about that Juvia's Place? What about that Juvia's Place? And probably more the foundation that comes in the pump and not the powder foundation. This is brand new. This just came out yesterday, available for purchase. It's from Kosas. It's their Glow IV Vitamin Infused Skin Illuminating Enhancer. I feel like everyone is making a product like this. And I, I don't know if I'm remembering correctly, but I think the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury is one of the first, kind of like that liquid radiant that you could use as a primer. You could mix in with your foundation. You could use as a spotlight highlight. You could use it in various ways on the face. Um, I know Lisa Eldridge makes a product like that. Auric makes a product like that. Elf makes a product like that. I think before that point, everything else we had seen was more radiant primers. I remember seeing a lot of radiant primers. And then when the Hollywood filter came out from Charlotte Tilbury, I feel like it was kind of, could be used both as primer as well as like a complexion product. And this is interesting, but this is kind of expensive. Is Kosas really this expensive? I thought it was a little bit more affordable. It's $38. There's 10 shades, and it's supposed to offer a nutrient-rich enhancement with a hint of reflection, a healthy glow that gets noticed. You can use it all over as a targeted highlight. Mix it with foundation or your skincare. There's 10 shades. This doesn't even sound... I mean, it's interesting, but to me it's more interesting that I feel like like there's, there's already so many of these. This is one that I was kind of like, why? <laughs> it didn't make sense to me because there's so many options, especially with the e.l.f. one out there. I haven't tried the e.l.f. one. Everyone's gaga for it. But the truth is I have so many radiant products. I don't need anything else like this. And maybe I just haven't jumped on the Kosas train, but this doesn't even look that exciting to me. Let me know. Is this something that kind of wakes your brain up and makes you go, whoa, wait, what's that? This is, does nothing for me. I really have my eyeball on this. All right, so I don't know how, I think I was watching a video and somebody mentioned that these were gonna be releasing and I was like, wait, what? Charlotte Tilbury has matte beauty blush wands. Now I have her highlight wand, I have her contour wand. I do not have any of the blush wands, the ones that are kind of like the glowy blushes because I feel like if I want that, I can mix you know, a color with her highlight wand and then glowy blush. <laughs> but a matte blush? Ooh, that looks really interesting. And it's in that same format. Now, I hate the delivery method. I know so many people are jumping on this. Tarte has it, Flower Beauty has it. Um, a lot of people have this like squeezy tube with the cushion applicator. I really don't like it. Let me grab one. So I have both the contour and the highlight. And the reason I don't like this is, do you see how ooey gooey it gets here? And I actually clean these regularly when I pull them out. Like they just, they just get stuff everywhere. I wish, and I, I kind of see why people like it because the cushion here, but I feel like this is just waiting to get gross and gooey. <laughs> 
Um, I think it would be more interesting to have it maybe with a small tip on the end, you squeeze out just a little bit, and then you apply from there. And maybe people like being able to dot it on their face. I don't know. But there are going to be matte blush ones of these because there are radiant blush versions of this. And I just yeah, didn't really excite me. But these new ones, oh, they look really pretty. There's three shades, four shades. Looks like there's a red, an orange, a pink, and a dusty mauve shade. I bet you that dusty mauve shade is Pillow Talk. Oh yes, yes it is. I'm trying to mentally convince myself I don't need this, but this really has my attention. If this shows up on my doorstep, don't be surprised. I've been really curious about Jones Road Beauty. I haven't tried anything, anything at all. First of all, love Bobbi Brown. Love, love, love Bobbi Brown. Um, I've always really been a big fan of her natural, more me but in color approach to makeup. Um, has made some really beautiful and groundbreaking products in the past when she sold her namesake line and then came out with Jones Road Beauty. There's some really interesting things. And I think what has really caught my attention with Jones Road is that it's even more so you but in color and the natural you, not trying to fix any problems, but just letting you look like your best version of you, that has really intrigued me. I haven't purchased anything because I don't know that I, I understand all the products. It's like that balm situation that really has me intrigued. But look, here is a new product. This is just the bronzer. And um, looks like there are seven shades. A silky powder bronzer that adds instant warmth to the skin. It's sheer, it's buildable. You can use it for a natural tint or for color correction. Interesting. $35. And this is something that I could definitely see myself picking up. I don't know that I'm going to right away, but this this is the one of the first things I was like, ooh, well, I guess a Charlotte Tilbury, but this one too was like, ooh interesting and maybe this is a little bit more accessible to me than like maybe the balm or some of the other products that jones road has out there um this is something that instantly oh i know how to use that and what's interesting is that the lightest shade is kind of like a tawny pink it's called dusty rose as a bronzer it looks more like a cool toned blush but i mean i don't know i'm not a makeup artist um, there are some really beautiful shades in here, and you have some more warm leaning ones, some more cool leaning ones, um, but they really look beautiful. I am very curious about these. If you have tried Jones Road Beauty, what are the products you would recommend? And if you like the brand, are you planning on picking up the bronzer? Now that spring is around the corner, all we're getting is a lot of cheek products. <laughs> and this one really has me excited. It's new from Danessa Myricks. It's the Yummy Skin Blurring Balm Powder Flushed Matte Color for Cheeks and Lips. Boy, last year I remember when she released her dewy skin palette, it was like cheeks and lips, like four of them. I have one, I love it. It's so, so beautiful. Um, but these are kind of siblings or cousins to the Yummy Skin Blurring Balm that comes in that kind of bronzy packaging that looks like a, a little disc. Really interesting. Um, I like that these are matte. And it's interesting because last year she came out with like a dewy cheek palette and now we're moving into matte. I feel like we're kind of definitely moving away from that super glowy, super highlighty, super radiant glass skin look. And we're moving more towards natural and more mattified looking skin. These colors are super saturated and gorgeous. Oh, I am really kind of got my eyeball on um, the one in Prima Donna and Golden Hour. They're very bright. One of them looks like a straight up tangerine and the other one looks kind of like a watermelon red. Oh, they're so beautiful. I'm trying to remind myself not to buy any more kind of rosy tones, like a um, rosewood. I have so many, <laughs> I have so many kind of rose toned blushes right now, but brighter, punchier colors for spring and summer. I might pick one of these up. This definitely has my attention. Oh, they're just beautiful. And it would probably be, if you're looking at um, the swatches, uh, the second and third one from the bottom. The third one from the bottom, kind of right in the middle, is called Golden Hour, and then the second from the bottom is called Prima Donna. I feel like the darkest one, Dancing Queen, is gorgeous, but might actually be a little too intense for my fair skin, but the other ones are just calling my name. <gasps> oh, yeah, this is exciting. I'm probably gonna grab one of these. I don't know what it is, I feel like, I am all about the lips and cheeks right now. There is a new product from RMS Beauty. This is their Lip Lights. I don't even know what it is. It just, 
it's just a picture and it, it just says lip lights. <laughs> and it says can be worn alone or over a lipstick, but it, it comes in that really interesting metal tube packaging. Um, it has, it kind of looks, let me grab one. It looks like it's about this size. This is a Glossier cloud paint. So this is plastic packaging, but these look like they're coming in recyclable metal tubing and have a small closure like this. So it's probably something you'd have to squeeze out, apply with a finger or a lip brush. I don't know how well that would like lead into like on the go application. Now, if it's sheer enough, because I love the Glossier um, Balm.com, I am forever like taking off a little bit of this, swiping it on, and then whatever's left, rubbing it in on the back of my hand. So my left hand is always a little bit more hydrated than my right. I wonder if these lip lights are something that, you know, they're too tinted that if you were to do that, it would look like you had product in the back of your hand and then you would, you know, accidentally get it on your clothes and you'd be wearing makeup on your clothes. But if they're anything like the color of the tubes, like, I don't know, this has this has me very intrigued. It doesn't say anything more than you can wear it alone or over a lipstick. What does that mean? I need to know more. And this was like from a week and a half ago. Why do we not know more at this point? Maybe I need to check the RMS website. Right, another lip product. This is one that I was like, ooh, and then I was like, but wait, but wait, it's new from Tower 28. These are the juice balms. First of all, love me a lip balm and love me a chubby lip balm in a twist up packaging. Yes, yes, yes. The colors are so pretty. Um, the bright colors, um, the nudes, they just look so beautiful. But all I can think of is that the last time I got Tower 28 products, eight months later, they smelled off. Now I know there are clean products, so there's not gonna be preservatives in this. I think this is kind of reminding myself that I have a lot of lip products and unless I'm going to dedicate myself to using that one until it's gone, there's a good chance it's going to go bad because it is one of those clean products where there's no preservatives in there. It's not going to last nearly as long. And if I use it a handful of times and then it sits for a while and then I come back to use it, oh no, it smells like a crayon or it smells like it's gone off. That would really make me sad. But I think this would be great if you like moving into spring or summer with like one new really glossy, juicy, pigmented product. This might be like not super pigmented, but make your natural look color a little bit more enhanced. These look so pretty. I mean, they're, they're glossy, they're pretty, they've got some color to them, but they're not like over the top. And if you don't have a huge collection, these do, I don't know, if I had like less than 20 lip products, I would buy one of these in a heartbeat, but I don't need them. I'm probably gonna skip this, but it definitely caught my attention. Oh boy, I feel like all I saved was lip products because Natasha Denona's I Need a Red. I told you I stayed off of Instagram for all of January, not completely, but I tried to make sure I wasn't scrolling. Oh, look at this, this is new. So I didn't know that Natasha Denona came out with the I Need a Red lip collection. It's for Valentine's Day. There's two red lips and two lip pencils. Oh my goodness. Okay, so first of all, I like the prices. The lip stilo is $27. The lip pencil is $24. If you want to get a set of one pencil, one coordinating lipstick, it's $45. I feel like that's an actually a really good price for a more high-end brand. And I definitely feel like Natasha Denona fits into that category. It's one stroke pro precision lipstick, long wearing, um, two shades with a matching liner. Wow, these look so gorgeous and you know I love a red lip. This is one where I have to remind myself, I picked up some new reds during December. Um, I've been trying to use the ones that I got recently from Victoria Beckham. I have two reds from that line. I don't need, when do I ever need a red lipstick? But these are really interesting. I have never tried a Natasha Denona lip product because at this point there's, I need a rose, I need a nude. It's like all the shades that I'm like, yeah, okay. And now she's talking my love language and I'm like, uh -huh, do I need? I don't know, I'm, I'm probably gonna say no, but we'll see what happens. But I'm really curious whether this formula is the same as what we're getting in traditional Natasha Denona lipsticks. I don't know because the, the lip stilo, it's a lot slimmer, it's a lot narrower, it's not the same bullet format looks a little different. The pencil probably is a similar format, just different colors. Oh, more reds. Dude, I told you, I feel like everybody's coming for me. These are Valentine shades. Fenty has their refillable, when did it come out? 2021, their lipsticks, it came out in refillable cases. 
and they came out with what eight to twelve shades all right I didn't love any of them I love the idea of a refillable case so so much but now there are three new reds because the first red there was I think it was kind of like the boldest one in the line okay it was nice but I didn't have to have it but these <gasps> these are so pretty there's a tomato red called Danger Dancer. Um, there is a Frequent Flyer, which is a wine shade, and a Kiss and Cutie, which is a bright strawberry red. So it's the kind of tomato red and the strawberry red that are just like, <gasps> kind of have me excited. And then they have the limited edition red refillable case. Okay, I know, I know. I don't need it. And all I could think of is, dude, you have so much red lipstick. But the one from Natasha and this one, this is the first time I've been excited by a Fenty lipstick because up to this point I went and I swatched them all in store and they were like, yeah, they're nice. It's not that they're a bad formula. They just didn't like pull me in. These reds, it's like they're calling my name. Oh, here's something that really caught my attention because one of the other products from this line in the same shade is my favorite, absolute favorite. It's a new shade of lip lacquer from e.l.f. So these are $3. They're very affordable drugstore. It's a vitamin enriched lip gloss that delivers a sheer wash of color and shine. And they're three bucks. And they have orange blossom, cherry bomb, whisper pink, and my favorite shade, black cherry. Black cherry is kind of like a gorgeous and I, I have their sheer slick which is a sheer lightweight lipstick it looks very much like the black honey almost lipstick from Clinique I feel like they're like straight across dupes you can kind of like formula feels the same colors really really like so close I can't tell the difference and then now they brought it out in a gloss for three dollars dude that is really if I can find one the next time I'm at the drugstore, I am picking one up just to see. I'm hoping that the formula, I've never tried any of the e.l.f. glosses, that it's not sticky, that it doesn't um, kind of like cling to itself and as you talk, you know, kind of settle into the corners and string and pull. I don't like that. I hope it doesn't smell bad. I hope it doesn't taste bad, but I don't know for $3. But it's the color, black cherry. I love that. And it looks so pretty on all the skin tones they have it modeled here. That one definitely has my attention. So in mid-January, Hourglass dropped some new lipsticks. This is the Unlock Satin Cream Lipstick. These are really interesting. I'm so curious about these. So these are ultra hydrating lipsticks with a satin cream finish. They're buildable or full coverage. And I think buildable to full coverage. I think that's what it means. It has a magnetic case. It has argan oil, mango seed butter, avocado oil for comfortable wear and a weightless formula. There are 13 shades and I'm looking at the shades. I don't know. They're very nude leaning nude and kind of rosy nudes. Um, maybe there are some deeper, almost berry tones. I think they also have like a red one that comes in like red packaging and it's like their other one um, that is like carmine free. They have one of their really thin lipsticks that is a carmine free one. I haven't tried that one. These are $38 and this definitely has my attention. I'm really, really, really curious. <laughs> I don't know. I don't need any new lipsticks, but this is the sort of lipstick that I love. An easy everyday lipstick that is comforting, that is not like completely matte and not completely glossy somewhere in the middle. It would just be perfect for everyday wear. I don't know. All right, these have been everywhere. People either love them or hate them. They are the new Hollywood Glow Glide Face Architect Highlighters from Charlotte Tilbury. There are seven shades. Okay, here's what's funny, is that since I got the ones from Rare Beauty, the Positive Light Silky Touch Highlights, I have two of those. I haven't really been interested in anything else. I'm not wearing them today, I'm wearing something else, but these are really expensive. These are $48 a piece. I was like, $48 for a single highlight, holy moly. I feel like for $48, for almost $50, this is gonna have to do like amazing things for my face. At least there's a wide range of shades. I don't know, have you tried this? This is one of those things that I, I know Charlotte kind of hangs her hat on glowy products and it's kind of been the queen of highlight and the queen of glow and I love so many of Charlotte's highlights. I have a ton. I have a ton of Charlotte Tilbury highlights and I usually like them all. I just feel like at this point, that's not what I'm excited about. I'm more excited about her matte blushes than I am about this highlight. I'm sure it's gorgeous, I'm sure it's pretty, but for $48, 
That's a lot. I'm, I'm not picking this up. There is a new concealer from Tom Ford. It's the Traceless Soft Matte Concealer. It comes in 20 shades, doesn't say what price it is. I'm so curious, so curious. I'm always looking for the perfect concealer and the older I get, the more I'm looking for that magic bullet concealer, the one that is gonna stay all day, that's gonna cover my darkness under my eyes, it's not gonna settle into my crinkles, that if I powder to make sure it stays all day, it's not going to all of a sudden look like a dry, dry desert. Traceless Soft Matte Concealer, those are really interesting words. I'm really curious. I have never tried any Tom Ford complexion products. I've tried eye products before, but not this. This definitely has me curious. I know it's gonna be a pretty penny because for pity's sake, it's Tom Ford. But I would probably not instantly purchase, but I would wait to see reviews and then I might consider purchasing. I think I'm gonna leave it there for now. I feel like there are so many products I could continue to talk about because there's a lot of other stuff here, but I feel like the ones that really gave me that emotional reaction of like, wait, what? Or <gasps> we've already talked about. <laughs> and a lot of it was lip products and cheek products. Those are the things that really kind of are catching me right now. And you know I love a lip product and I'm addicted to cheek products, but I think I need to like still continue like not making a purchase and just enjoying what I have. I don't know that, there might be one or two things that I pick up, but right now I think I'm just gonna take a deep breath and stay strong. I would love to know what products are catching your eye. I know that we probably wear makeup differently, have different preferences, are looking for different sorts of makeup items or things that make you go like, wait, what? <laughs> Let me know what those are in the comment section down below. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have an incredible day and I will see you again soon.